All right, we're back with no change of clothing because this totally wasn't shot on the same day. <laughs> um, we're gonna continue doing more chores because that's all we do. And we just advance as well, we're now lawmen. Which apparently doesn't mean much because we just put a skirt on a Khajiit and who got assassinated by someone, so. <laughs> Whatever law there is, we're upholding it now. <laughs> Mistress Therana is concerned about a slave rebellion. Well, maybe she just toasts them like she did the Khajiit. <laughs> Slaves have revolted in the Ababal egg mine. First go to Telbranora, head north on the small peninsula, cross the next island to the northwest. That sounds difficult. <laughs> There's a command. I forget what the command is, but... You can actually mark a place on your map. Now, this is something I didn't learn until... Yes, Outlander, what like, do you want? Maybe a year ago, that you can mark this map. Useful things that nobody knows about. So yes, they're no, useless. No one ever explains it to you. Yeah. Okay, so for some reason, the battle music is being perpetually played in this little segment of Sage of Mora. That's happened to me before, <laughs> so I have no idea what it's about, but it's happening. So now we have to go kill a bunch of slaves. They're pretty trusting of you to let you handle this. Yeah. Because knowing, knowing, knowing Marwin, the slaves are probably like all Khajiits and Argonians yeah. and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Now we're gonna really be betraying our own kind. <laughs> yeah. My time is precious, so make it quick. Ooh. We can really show how shallow we really are. <laughs> True. <laughs> Let's use one of those swift swim or water walking potions. Do. Can you not? Wow, another one. <laughs> that wasn't that bad. Of course, it's. It's the, uh, ah, there we go. I was about to say, it's, it's very Morrowind like to be just swarmed by cliff racers. Another one. Yeah. That one was quick. But, uh, yeah, you, you wanted to build the Undercity, uh, but you hadn't uh, ever really played Marwind. Yeah, our our modding adventures. I, I probably spent more time modding Marwind than actually playing the proper game. I discovered the construction set and had grand ambitions for this thing. I it had uh, conceived of as the Undercity, which was the, supposed to be this, this large city I was going to construct all myself, like, that was completely underground. <laughs> and it was sort of like this... It was sort of supposed to be like a, a whole society, like, underground that um, was sort of seedy and, like, they, they sort of, like, worshipped demons and did drug, like, distillation and all the bad things in life. And, uh, I actually, and, and I actually put a lot together. I, I spent a lot of time on it, but it never quite came together. Right. I, think, I think the scope of it was just too large for one person to do, um, and it ended up never being completed. Yeah, I was assisting on it. I, I think our plan was, because you were really good at, like, 
making stuff feel real, like putting clutter down and creating people and all that stuff. And I was, I sucked at that, but I could like put together interiors and stuff. So, uh, like the actual building spaces. So I remember we were kind of working on it together for a while. Yeah. And I didn't do very much on it. I basically uh, created the the uh, series of shafts that leads down into it. And then I think I created the giant cave that we put it in, but that was about it. Yeah. It was, it was a really cool idea, though, and I'm bummed that... Uh, we never really did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's just, I think, I think it would have been better just to have conceived of a slightly smaller and completed it and then gone on once we're more confident with some water. No ways to speak. Mm -hmm. Um, I do remember you, you put together quite a large mod by yourself. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that was, uh, Pirate Island. I basically lifted this landmass out of the ocean to the west of the island. And using people, resources that people had already made, like pirate outfits, I, uh, basically put a whole bunch of pirates on this, uh, this island. I made a little, uh, cave for them to mine in. Uh, I did, made a bunch of houses. You know, I put a little couple plants on it, uh, decorated it up, had docks, ships, um, a manor, I think, at one point toward one part of the island. And then I <laughs> I created all the characters and I wrote all the unique dialogue for them. <laughs> so that was pretty fun. And I have no idea where that file is, which sucks. <laughs> oh, I I should look. I might I might have the file. Okay, so these slaves say Therana is crazy. <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> and they have grievances because she's crazy and he wants me to let him out of his bracer so he can cast magic. Should we free them or tell them to get back to work? Uh, you asking me? I don't, I don't know. I don't know, dude. Is can you can you fail? I feel I, I feel bad. Let's let's agree to free them and see what happens. All right. That's the more adventurous choice. We might get kicked out of. Although in my experience, these kind of quests end with uh, the ability to say, they all escaped and I had no idea how. <laughs> so, we have to find a key. He said that it's either in the mine or in somewhere in Telbernora. I don't feel like going back right now, so let's see if it's in here. in Morrow and you can actually own slaves yourself um, they're in the uh, they're in uh, Sage with more you can... no they're not they're not for sale in Sage with more they're for sale in Telmora I think you go and uh, buy the uh... wow that was easy <laughs> you go and buy slaves I think for 5,000 each or maybe it's 2,000 Something like that, and they follow you around. It, it was kind of neat in the uh, in the vanilla game because you didn't really have followers besides some people that you needed to escort for a mission. So it was cool to have like you know someone following you around, even though all they could do was use their fists <laughs> and they had no armor or anything. So that was cool. And I remember when I first got the uh, PC version. I actually added um, items to their inventories 
and uh, set their skills higher so they can actually be useful. And um, you are the first. Yeah, I basically use them as companions. That was pretty cool. Um, then I downloaded a mod that gave you real companions, basically. Yeah. So what was the deal? These guys don't really seem to be rebelling. No, they're just being overworked. Because <laughs> the, the guy that I talked to was like, yeah, I delivered the eggs last time and she was decorating her stupid house with rotten eggs. <laughs> so... I can kind of sympathize with them. I sympathize more with them because then the poor Kajit, <laughs> I got murdered <laughs> because I'm not in grave danger right now. <laughs> yeah, you don't have the crazy woman looking at you. Yeah. Though I'm interesting to, interested to see how the uh, consequences will be on this one. That little dome over there, I forget the, I forget the name for the domes. They, I think, I, they do have a, a name. I forget, I forget what they're called in the lore, but they're basically these little outposts around the world. Um, they're usually in remote locations, and they have, like, they usually have, like, strong, isolated groups of people who are out there for, like, research, or, you know, trying to establish a sort of base camp for one of the great houses and they're pretty cool places to explore Fetcher. Fetcher. <laughs> so the music you hear uh, if you're familiar with Morrow and you know that this music isn't in the uh, original soundtrack. Uh, the Tamriel Rebuilt downloads come with a whole bunch of new music, and it's not like shoddily thrown together music. It sounds really good, and so it mixes with the uh, vanilla soundtrack and, uh, you know, shuffles alongside with it, so. Again, this is one of the new tracks as well. We need to sit down and make some fatigue potions. That's kind of the, the bottleneck right now. We never have any fatigue. When I played this game on Xbox, it had cheats, which thinking back now is kind of weird, but uh, you could use this cheat that uh, it never let your, either your Magicka fatigue or health go down. You couldn't do all three at once, but you got to choose one. So, for most of the my years playing this game, I was playing in a way that my fatigue never went down, or health, in extreme circumstances. So I never really had the real experience. Wait, do I have to go back to her, or? Probably have to go back to the mouth. But yeah, now that I, uh, I play the game like how it was meant to be played, I watch my fatigue like a hawk. And since, since we stole that Grandmaster's Mortar and Pestle, we should be able to get some nice potions out of it. Yep. Just gotta find a, an alchemist to get some ingredients. Restore fatigue potions are really easy to make. The ingredients are cheap and plentiful. You can get like salt rice, quama eggs, those both do restore fatigue. Uh, Hackle low leaf, I believe. And something else that's really common. That's good.
So eventually, I believe, when we uh, run out of quests to do with the mouths, we report to the wizards themselves, which, you know, they kind of send some of the more indeed. difficult stuff. But I believe you have to kind of choose a uh, choose a guy to ally yourself with, ally yourself with. Is that something? I... And there are a few good <laughs> candidates. Of course, a lot of the Telvanni wizards are cantankerous and hate everybody, so <laughs> some of them will just won't like you, but... Uh, here's a whole bunch of ingredients. One of the nice things about Morrowind is that a lot of the shopkeepers have, uh, ingredients that restock automatically. So, you can buy a certain amount from them, open up their inventory again, and buy the same thing. <laughs> Convenient. Yeah. At least. A large Kwama egg. And you can kind of manipulate it. I think if I sell her those seven Kwama eggs, now she has eight in her inventory. Buy those. No, that must not be restocking. Not every item they carry restocks. I guess the salt rice doesn't either. No? Oh well. Let's get some wick wheat that restores health. That's always a good ingredient to have. A trauma root is levitate. Let's get some of that. So is racer blooms. Restore health. So what is the, uh, how do you find out what ingredients do? Is it based on figuring them out, or is it based on the skill level? Yeah, it's, uh, skill level. Basically, you just, uh, the thresholds are level 30. You get two ingredients revealed to you. I think you need to be at least 15 to have one ingredient revealed, or one effect I'm revealed listening. to you. 30 is 2, I think 60 is 3, and then maybe 90 is 4. Don't quote me on those numbers, but it might be. I'm pretty sure it's in that ballpark range. And then, it's not like in Skyrim where uh, you can create a potion and Go ahead, that potion can have okay. all four effects from the get-go. Like, you can't... In Marwin, you can't utilize more effects you have than to say, what you know how to make. <clears throat> oh, I see. Gives you an incentive to train it then. Right. At least. So, like, like I guessed, I apparently told the this person that the slaves escaped. <laughs> <coughs> I see. But now she wants to teach me a spell to command uh, humanoid, I think, so. May your slaves be more obedient. Thank you for saying that to a Khajiit. <laughs> oh, we cannot be advanced to a mouth. We have to find a patron. Uh, no more chores for any of the mouths. <coughs> or from that one, at least. Is there something you need? I've always liked this dress. It's got this yeah. weird you know, the spidery thing on it. Yeah, that is pretty cool. Mouth of Mistress Dratha. <coughs> so, so can you go to What's-Her-Face? Or is she, or is she not available? Like, <laughs> yeah, um... Is there something I think, unfortunately, the, uh, the Great Houses... I think they do this in Red Aran, too. You have to find a sponsor. They kind of shoehorn you into one person. Uh, I won't uh, spoil who that is. and I might be mistaken on this on House Telvani, um, but we'll find out who that is soon. I see. <clears throat> so we need to find five portions of muck for that mouth. How many do we have? 
We have three already, so that's not too bad. Let's go to our potion making friend. Actually, let's make some potions ourselves. So let's find the restore fatigue first. And like many other um, skills in Morrow, and you have the ability to fail when you use potions or when you use alchemy. <clears throat> In the beginning, it's really annoying because, like, very few of your uh, potions make it. You just have to keep at it. Less forgiving. Yeah. Than the other games. This entire game is less forgiving. But these potions are a godsend because fatigue is pretty much your gateway in this game to surviving. That might be the last of the restore fatigues. <clears throat> yep. So for some reason I'm only getting like 18 frames per second right now. It's lagging a little bit. Oh, there it goes. Let's try and make some restore health. Potion making is something that, despite the, you know, the change in mechanics from game to game, I think is a really interesting um, mechanic or skill. Because in, uh, especially in Maro, it was the only skill you had at your disposal where you could create something and sell <clears throat> your creations for a profit. It's not like you could create your own armor or anything like that. It was a merchant skill. Mm-hmm. Nice. Some some are homebrew levitate potions. Wait, is that our first level up? Hey, that's our first level up. So yeah, in uh and I don't even think in Oblivion there were Oblivion you had uh, alchemy as well, and you could, could you do odd jobs and like collect, you know, ore and sell it yet? I don't think so. But anyway, yeah, alchemy was like, it could be a merchant skill if you needed it to be. They had artifact hunting in Oblivion. Did they? Yeah, you could go out and find those, uh, whatever those, uh, those elven artifacts, ancient artifacts in the, in the dungeons and bring them back. Oh, yeah. The, uh, for that collector, right? Yeah. Alright, here's the rest of the muck we need. Um... You know what, let's deliver this muck and we will go find a bed to raise our level. Now, I have so much nostalgia about this game. So, I downloaded a mod for Skyrim that changes the level up uh, sound to the Morrowind one. <laughs> so I have no idea what the vanilla uh, Skyrim sound is. Take a look at our potions that we created. Oh, that's a, that's a pretty powerful restore health spell, at least for being level one. Um, nice, nice restore fatigue. 
will levitate eight points for 23 seconds. That's kind of weak, but whatever. It's just good to have some extra ones. What do the points represent? <coughs> levitate your speed. Go yeah. Ahead. How quickly you move. And if it's dreadful being, uh, having super slow levitates. May I help you out? May I help you? Do you have the mark? Oh crap, I think I didn't learn that spell that she was offering. Black Jinx. Here's one, I guess here's one of the first uh, bigger quests we get. We have to find an enchanted ring. May I help you? Um, we're gonna go find somewhere to sleep. So I forgot that in Hell's Telvanni they teach you a lot of spells. Like we've learned Mark and Recall, which apparently we have a good chance of casting, so I'm gonna go in here and do that. There we go. Now anytime we use the recall spell, we'll head back there. But yeah, the they teach you a lot of spells in Telvanni, which is nice, so you don't have to pay for them. But those are the slaves for sale. Argonian and Khajiit, and then another Argonian. Hurry this up, will you? <clears throat> I'm listening. Here's an inn, I believe, so. Let's level up. Beds, yes. Now, Ma Morrowind restricts you by saying, resting here is illegal. You can't restore health or magicka in basically a perfect place. <coughs> I guess their homeless population must be super low if they enforce that. <laughs> but in Oblivion and Skyrim, you can just wait an hour and have all your crap restored. In this, you have to rest. And the same requirement is for level up. So we're gonna rest for 12 hours. Hope we don't get attacked by another assassin. And our first ever level. Here's a screen where, that you might be unfamiliar with if you only play on Skyrim. We actually have attributes in this game. And how far the attribute goes up depends on how many uh, skills you've increased that correspond to that attribute. And you get three little, uh, basically, uh, things to spend them on. So we always want to do intelligence. We're a mage build, and intelligence means we get more magicka, so we want to do intelligence. Uh, let's see. <coughs> Speed. Let's go with endurance because it affects how much health we gain per level, and we want to get that up uh, as quickly as we can. Let's do willpower again, because we're a, a mage build. And Morrowind, as in Oblivion, Skyrim doesn't do this, but Morrowind and Oblivion do. They give you little messages every time you level up. And this one says, you realize that all your life you've been coasting along as if you were in a dream. Suddenly facing the trials of the last few days, you've come alive. So in this dark hotel room, we're going to end it there for today. It's our character. It's Drophilathon. Who cast a frostbite spell.